first question over here on the right. From Tencent, uh, Steph, could you walk us through mine that we finally hit that three pointer after using my Um It was a crazy night all the way around and didn't have anything going offensively. Tried to still play with energy and try to do little things here and there to help help the team, but to get one one good shot. Uh, down the stretch and still have confidence in myself, knock it down. My teammates were talking to me the whole game, which was helpful. And uh, thankfully, you know, that, that last one went in. So uh, me and my brother, we always, growing up shooting and playing, we always say you got to make your last shot before you leave the gym. Got it done tonight. <laughs> Mark, front and left. Uh, Mark Medina Barry and his group. Can you take us through that moment when you were pretty amped up and emotional for Kevin after you hit that uh, big three? Uh, yeah, I actually said the wrong thing. Um, <laughs> it was almost like I was cussing him out. <clears throat> but I was so happy I like yelled the wrong thing. But it was that was a huge shot. Um, you know, from Steph three to that one, like he took that from about thirty eight feet out. And just to put a dagger, you know, on them like that, that was a huge shot. So I can't, uh, I don't really know. Like it was just high emotion. How much did that harken back? Any reminders from his uh, game through three last year? Definitely, um, you know, from right in the same area, uh, just a little bit deeper. But um, you know, this this game for him was like deja vu of game three last year. All you know, just all the way around. Phil here in the front. Hey, Draymond, Phil Barber, Santa Rosa, Press Democrat. Um, were you upset with yourself for getting the technical, or were you more proud that you obviously kind of reeled things in after that? And second question, how much do you want to take care of business and settle this thing on Friday? I wasn't upset with myself about the technical. Um, <laughs> but, you know, things happen. It's, it's the NBA Finals. You know, it should get heated uh, when you're competing for what both teams are competing for. Uh, nonetheless, you know, it's important to not get a second one and, you know, be a part of trying to do something special. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, none of that really matters. Um, we got a chance to close out the series uh, on Friday, and that's the, our focus. Scott Sosler, San Francisco Chronicle, Steph on the left. Steph, could you tell, tell us what, uh, as you were walking off the court back to the locker room, what Iguodala was saying? He put you in the headlock and was talking to you. He was telling me what he's going to order at uh, our team dinner tonight. Um, <laughs> and I agree with his, his choices. <laughs> Steve, over here. Steve Ash from NBA.com. Uh, one for each of you. Steph, um, how much of a luxury is it for you to have the kind of shooting that you had for most of the game, and yet you look over, there's Kevin Durant, and he's doing everything you guys need to carry your team to a victory. Some some stars don't have that, you know, that option. The last two years I've been playing alongside Kevin Durant, so um, he's an amazing talent, amazing player. Uh, does amazing things every night. We uh, we all feed off each other. So tonight was not my night offensively. It was his night. Um, but like I said, it's, this this moment is great and. and Encourage each other along the way, and uh, we appreciate what we, what we bring out of each other. And uh, we talk about him all night; he was amazing. And for Draymond, real quick, I mean, you talked a little bit about it, but when you react emotionally and animatedly to a call after you already have a technical, have you sort of read the game officials to know where the line is that you can go up to, or are you kind of put your fate in their hands a little bit? Uh, no, I don't really view it like that. Um, you know, I, I'm a human being. We have emotions, and you, you, you react to certain things. Uh, I don't, you know, whether I have a reaction or not, I'm not walking up to the official and have a reaction. If I have a reaction, I'm probably going the other way. So, um, you know, it is what it is. I don't play the game of basketball worried about, you know, if the official is going to think one thing or another. You know, I just play and go about it that way. Kenny, back left on the aisle. Kenny wrote to WHBC for both you guys. Ty Lue used the term spurtability. You guys closed the first quarter strong, the second quarter to keep it within six, and then started that third quarter with another spurt. Is it something you guys focus on to end quarters that strong, and then you seem to be the best third quarter team in the NBA as well? 
I mean, it's a 48 minute game and the NBA in general is a game of runs. It's just a matter of you can keep your composure and your confidence and, and your rhythm when another team you know, starts the way that they did tonight. So we don't really get rattled very often. Um, so that helps us, but eventually you start to buckle down, get some stops. That feeds into your offense and your, your thrust and energy. And then from there, um, you can close the gap and try to get over the hump and, and, and just not get deflated, you know, no matter what happens early in the game. Um, and that's what we did tonight, especially knowing what, how, expecting how they're going to come in game three with, uh, with everything on the line. What's, Draymond, what's it like? LeBron talked about the stress of playing you guys now with KD there and all the weapons. What's it like to be on the other side of that, knowing that you're applying that stress because of the weapons you have but, and you can just kind of do your thing and let those guys get the points? Fun. <laughs> Very fun. Um, it allows all of us to play to our strengths, which is great. Tim? Draymond, Tim Kawakami, the athletic. At some point, are you thinking – you're up one in the fourth quarter, and Steph really hasn't made a shot. Is it kind of hitting you that this is happening, and somehow it's happening with Steph not making a shot yet? Uh, not necessarily thinking, oh, man, Steph hasn't made a shot, and we're up one. More so thinking we haven't played that great, and we're up one. Uh, we've taken several punches from them, uh, and we're up one. And so, uh, nonetheless, you know, we know that, <clears throat> you know, he's struggling from the field, and so, however, we're not going away from him. You know, we're going to continue to give him the ball, and he can continue to shoot however many shots he wants. But it's more so just the confidence that you gain from knowing through it all, um, through everything that has gone wrong up until that point, we still had a lead. And what does it tell you that might happen with Steph in game four? I'm not going to jinx it. <laughs> That's for sure. Definitely going to shoot that thing. Chris, you're in the front. Chris Haynes, ESPN, for any one of you guys. You guys were in this position last year and didn't get it done in, in game four. What do you guys do in preparation um, leading up to that game to make sure you come in with the right mindset? Um, same thing we did tonight, just talk about what to expect from their side, what we need to do better. Uh, it's like Draymond said, we can't play better um, as, a, as a unit. Um, from, more of, the, more of the game and, and, and understand that they're going to come out just gunslinging. It's going to be uh, you know, shots from all over the place. Probably LeBron's going to come out aggressive, but we have what we need um, focus-wise and energy-wise to, to combat that. And um, Looking forward to the, to the opportunity to, to close out and win a championship. So um, It's going to be tough. We thought tonight was hard. It's going to be even harder in game four, so we got to be ready. Anthony, all the way in the back right. Anthony Slater with the Athletic. Draymond, just forgetting about Kevin's just offensive numbers, how different do you think his aggression was from game one to the last two games of the series? And do you think any of that had to do with maybe some of the criticism he took for the missed box out late and, and just how he's rebounded since then? Uh, I mean, I think he's rebounded great um, since then. And, and I don't, I'm not sure if – I didn't see any other criticism that he took for not uh, – you know, getting that box now to get that rebound because it was so much attention on what happened after the rebound. And, you know, probably a great thing for us. But, you know, he's been super aggressive. Uh, the way he rebounded the ball tonight, 13 rebounds was huge, especially, you know, when you're fighting uh, their big guys. We need other guys to come in there and rebound. And he was, you know, key in doing that. Uh, his, but his aggression on both sides of the ball after game one has been key, you know, what we're doing from – you know, picking up Brian full court time to time, um, getting into the ball. Uh, you know, he's been that force for us on both sides, which is, you know, one of the reasons we're up 3 0. Mark, the second round. Mark Schwartz, ESPN, one for each of you. Steph, LeBron called Kevin a, an assassin. And you know about making shots that are assassin shots. What does it take to step up two years in a row in that situation with like 45 seconds to go? and just toss that ball up, this time from five feet further than last year? Supreme self-confidence. Um, he works hard at his game, <clears throat> at his craft. He's, um, he's ready for those moments, and when you have that belief in yourself, the moment's never too, too big for you. So um, man, I have the guts and the composure to take that shot last year and tonight. Um, it was big, and I think he, he would live with the result knowing how much work he's put into it. And, 
that's what superstars do. And Draymond, you play alongside two of the ultimate assassins. When you watch Steph and you watch KD do the kinds of things they do, what, if anything, differentiates them in their assassinhood? You sound like you and I'd include me as an assassin. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a little different. You know, um, when, when Steph's in that mode, uh, it's a little more flashy. And, you know, it's dance, step back, guy about to fall. Um, and it's Kevin, when he's in that mode, he's usually shooting over the top of people. Nonetheless, uh, you get the same results for both, and you know to have a lu had a luxury to play with two guys like that, you know is great for all of us on this team and the coaching staff and everybody else in the organization. Uh, two of the you know best shooters, best scorers of our time, if not you know of our game and the history of our game. You know, had that luxury is, is pretty great. Second row on the right here, Steph uh, Dream on Paul to his ESPN Brazil. This question is for both of you. Uh, when you see one. Everybody sees you guys in action. It seems like you guys are like best friends on the court. Can you speak to the chemistry that you guys have off the court and how that helps you uh, with your chemistry on the court? You know, I'm going into much of our personal lives. I think it's a lot just we appreciate what we, we, we each bring to the fold. And that's a genuine appreciation uh, for everybody's story, everybody's talent, um, and how vital each one of us is to the, to the full group and for our success. So. Um, it's not just words, it's we you come in, you know, and to, to work every day, you appreciate who you get to, you know, suit up with. And that just uh, shows itself in, in, in every aspect of what we do, uh, on and off the floor. So, you know, we put time into it. Um, we've been through a lot uh, as a core group, and we have high character guys. So I think that, uh, you know, we got that part right. And uh, we want to you know, hold on to that as long as we can. Time for final three. Left side there. And then we'll go in the back. Mm. Yeah. Trista Crick, USA Today. Um, you guys have won on your own floor and you've won on theirs. Is it going to be any more meaningful if you can get a sweep? Not in those terms. It's just game four is the next one we have to play and we want to win a championship. So. Um, I don't think any of us will, that word will come out in our celebration if we can get it done. It's just a matter of winning four games however however you can. And we've done a great job putting ourselves in a great position, so we've got to close the deal um, with 48 great minutes on, on Friday. Fourth row on left, oh, sorry. Oh, and then finally, Draymond, you had all seven outfits picked out from your stylist, right? What happens? with the other three. He lied to y'all. I ain't saw game six or seven outfit yet. Um, they still got that. I got game five outfit though. It's pretty dope. I really don't want to wear it though. <laughs> Fourth row on the aisle. Joseph Cachero on the score. For either one of you guys, a lot was made after the couple playoff games. KD struggled about maybe some of his ISO ball because of the way you guys used to play before he got here. but. Do you think people forget sometimes, you know, how deadly ISO ball can still be when the players of the caliber of someone like Kevin Durant? Did they watch tonight? They, uh, they, they found out. I mean, we have a great balance. I think when we're playing well, a lot of what we do is, is ball movement, player movement, the whole deal, and getting everybody touches involved and being threats on the floor. Um, but a guy that's, you know, has a skill like he does to be able to, like Draymond says, shoot over the top of guys, get to his spots. Um, you don't want to you know, force feed it. You want it to come out in, in our in our offense, and then let him do what he does. And so, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's nice to have that that, that option uh, along with all the other things that we do offensively. Dan, last question in the third row. Steph, Dan Feldman, NBC Sports. How much did how tonight play out? Uh, convince you, justify to you the efforts you personally made to recruit KD to the Warriors a couple of years ago? Um, we have you know, been in a situation where a guy's talent as he is is blended into what we do as a team and, and we've appreciated all his efforts and we've you know figured out you know our ways to to kind of elevate our games. Um, and, and nights like tonight 
he reminds people how great of a, a scorer he is uh, in all, all areas of, of, of offense and, and just how dominant he is. And, and uh, you know, over the course of the regular season, the playoffs, we all have an opportunity to uh, you know, do what we do and do it well uh, and put ourselves in a position to win championships. So uh, it's nice having him and nice having all 15 guys on, on the roster. And, and can you describe a little bit your reaction to some of the shots, particularly that last three? A lot of yelling. Not necessarily uh, enjoying the moment. Uh, he was so stone faced that somebody had to yell and show some emotion. So me and Draymond took care of that. Thank you. This concludes the session. Can you see?